Hello, Sagittarius. I just heard the name Spencer Chamberlain. He's the lead singer of Under Oath. And actually, I saw this video yesterday, this interview with him that was recently done about his battle with depression. And I'm also getting Daniel Johns. He's lead singer of Silver Chair. And he had a huge battle with anorexia. He didn't eat for like years. And it got like, there were times where he could control it and other times where he couldn't. And he got super skinny and uh, the whole diorama album that he did in Silver Chair is mainly about his anorexia problem. What is going on with this reading? I mean, we're doing the Hush Tarot. This tarot I bought um, a couple weeks ago by a man named Jeremy Hush. And it seems to really get into the cracks and the crevices of hard to talk about topics. So we're going to see. This one definitely wants to come out. What the old Hush wants to say today. So some information's coming into you. Somebody could be getting pregnant. You've been trying to get pregnant and it hasn't been working. It's been a very long, hard haul. Like you could have battled with something, you know, and I'm also getting, um, I have known people in my past that have been told to lose weight. Um, sometimes your weight can affect getting pregnant. Sometimes your medication can affect, uh, being pregnant. Sometimes your own mind can stop you from getting pregnant. So I think what's going on here is I think um, I think two people are trying to have a baby, okay? They're trying to conceive something. We've got the empress and the high priestess. It could be two women. And actually, I did work with a woman who had, uh, she did the, um, she got pregnant first. And then the other woman was going to get pregnant. And the other spouse couldn't get pregnant. Um, she was being very hard on herself and they had already tried twice and they knew the second time that they had tried, I think IVF, I think that's what it's called. The second time they tried, they forced it too quickly and she didn't conceive on that one too. And I wonder now coming a year around again, if maybe they're trying again. So I can't help but notice that it's like, I think it's two women. I thought this said the empress. I mean, I thought this said the emperor. So I thought, okay, there's the couple. But then I noticed it was a woman with another woman. So get some girl on girl action here. And it seems like these two ladies, okay. So one, the thing is, is that what was funny was the one that I worked with. It's like when we spoke about it, she didn't know I was a tarot reader or anything. So when she was talking to me about it, she was just being very open and honest. And then all of a sudden channeling Whitney comes on, right? And I'm like, hmm, I wonder what's going on in this scenario. Again, I didn't tell her that I was psychic or anything. We had this really nice long conversation. And then she realized, oh my gosh, I really think that it's the frame of mind that's stopping my wife from getting pregnant and I'm like I bet you that's probably what it is you know like she saw you have a baby and now that pressure on her because I think I'm pretty sure Christine got pregnant on the first run so that already put pressure on the second wife you know like like Christine already got pregnant once and and on the first try and now we're going on the third try and I haven't even got pregnant once you know so there could be like um my apologies I'm wearing my <laughs> pajamas under this so I'm trying to keep myself covered <laughs> <laughs> and I can't wear bras because of my scoliosis, so great. Mm. 
Anyways, okay, so that's what I'm getting here. So this high priestess, okay, I, I feel like is like Christine, right? She's already had the baby and now she's getting wind that something's coming in because watch this. So one partner is the one that makes everything happen, okay? It's always usually one partner is like a magician or a genie, something like that for a couple, okay? That's usually how couples work. So look at this. The high priestess gets wind in, okay? So see how those, that three of cups there, okay, those birds are the exact same bird that is talking in her ear. It's that same small red bird, okay? They could actually be cardinals, to be honest. They kind of do look like cardinals, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. Okay, but the other woman, okay, the one that's trying to get pregnant is looking the other way. So one is in tune and one is not. One partner is completely connected while the other one is not. The other one, okay, just keeps trying to do something. Seven of Pentacles and it's not really working out, right? They keep forcing themselves and forcing themselves. And what they don't realize is that they're not, in, they're not listening to their inner voice. Because there's the Ace of Cups right there. There's the conception, Okay, there's the birth, okay, but she can't see it because she's concentrating on all the work she's already done, not on the work that has to be done now and into the future in order for this to happen. She can just see what she's already done. So the wheel comes in, okay, we've got the wheel of fortune with the tower. Look at how awesome that is because it's like a, it's like a twist of fates, okay, it's like where something breaks down, something is created. And sometimes we have to tear down the old paradigm in order to make the new world, okay? Because you can't make your own world based on somebody else's facts or um, views and opinions. Um, you just can't. You, you have to make a world that makes sense to you, right? So it's like this, this empress realizes that, that once the wheel turns, she's the one that's in control, okay? And I think that's something that we all have to realize. It's like, especially when we're in our jobs and we're dealing with our bodies, um, we have to remember that we are the ones that are in the driver's seat, that it is not the people around us that control us. It is not, I don't care how hungry people are. I don't care how bad they need whatever it is that you're selling. You sell or you do what you can do within the time that you can do it. Nobody can push you to do something. And that's kind of what I'm realizing. So I have to realize that people don't bully me at work. I'm in control. And I'm talking guests, right? When you know a guest needs something and you know they're starving, you know they just want to get out of there and their kids start screaming. And it's like, well, everybody's kids are going to start screaming and everybody's hungry. So I can't push you to the front of the line because you seem like you can't handle it or you're more eager than everybody else. Everybody has to learn to slow down. Everybody has to learn that they're in control, okay? So I think that that's what this woman has to realize is that her body, she's trying to make her body do something that can naturally be done, okay? But it's naturally done in time and when it is ready. So, this empress that's having a really hard time with everything, okay, kind of having a hard time accepting the truth, having a hard time accepting that she's alive, having a hard time accepting that not everything is picture perfect, not everything uh, works out for you the way that it does for somebody else, that everybody's path is different and sometimes people's paths are more difficult than other people and we just have to accept that for what it is because we cannot change it. All we can do is change our opinion on the experience, right? When you feel like you want to break down, when you feel like you want to walk away, when you feel like you want to be finished, you carry on one foot after the other. That's what I try to tell my legs when I'm going past that eight hours and I'm still walking at a very unhealthy pace for my body. I just keep telling myself one foot after the other, waiting one foot after the other. Like, you know, because there can be a time where you get so exhausted that you have to remind yourself one foot after the other. Like you can do it. It's perseverance. It's, it's going past where the normal person would stop because the normal person is lazy. Okay. The normal person sees a dead end 
and goes, oh, there's a dead end. I guess I can't go anymore. A different kind of person sees a dead end and then goes, okay, how are we going to get past this? Or how are we going to get around it? Because we got to keep going. Passage doesn't stop. Keeps going. Right? So there's always a way to figure out how to get past something that seems impossible. Because nothing's impossible. And if it is impossible, that's not meant for you. Right? Like I watched this documentary about a man. Oh, my sister watched it. I didn't really watch it. But I was kind of in the background. And he walked a tightrope from um, the two tallest buildings in New York, which I believe were the Twin Towers at the time. I think he was waiting for the two towers to be built. This was in the 80s. And he walked a tightrope from one side to the other. Okay. Um, not everybody can do that. And also, not everybody can wait for something to be built in order for you to do something great. Right? Because it's patience. It's when you, when you know that you're in control, when you realize you're the one in control, okay? Nobody else can control you. No IVF can control you. No sperm can control you. Your body is in perfect control. But when you act out of sort when something happens or when your body gets to shut down when something doesn't go your way that you think is going to go your way, it's like that can kind of start to really set you back. Right? Because if you plan, if you want to plan on something, not everything is easily planned. Some things you really just have to be like, okay, this is a shot in the dark. You don't know, right? Because those are the best, those are the best shots is the ones you take in the dark because they're the ones that show how fearless you are, right? When you can see the target and you can't hit it in the moving light, then it seems like nothing that you do is right. You can get really hard on yourself, but if you take a shot in the dark, and you just happen to hit bullseye, it's like, how many, how many times do you actually think that that could happen in a lifetime? Not very many. But as long as you keep playing your chips right, then it'll probably happen every time. Because the shots in the dark that you take are the ones that, like I said, the normal person doesn't take because they don't see. So. Yep, 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 yep. So, universe is like, yo, give yourself this gift, okay? <laughs> give yourself this cup and stop worrying, okay? Um, this is a huge judgment call. This is supposed to happen, okay? A stalemate sometimes is supposed to happen. You getting to a crossroads and not knowing where the fuck you're supposed to go is supposed to happen, okay? It's called life. And sometimes we just have to let things die. Right? Old frame of minds. Old ways we used to do things. Old personalities. Shed a new skin. Okay? Take the old. Take all that. Well, statistics show. Well, this is a percentage that usually is successful. That's bullshit. Because you know that people pull those percentages out of their ass most of the time. And I do believe that those IVF people, okay, they make their money on fucking you over. So then you have to come back again. So also, please remember that it might not be you. It could be the office. So say you did two rounds and it's not working. Then don't do a third. Go somewhere else. You know what I mean? Because they may want that fucking 20 grand just to come out of you and then poof, you get pregnant. Oh, because they put two duds in you the first time. So then you would pay all that money. You have to remember, they're making their money off screwing people over, okay? It's business. And yes, just because it's a doctor or a doctor's office, it doesn't mean they can't be shady as fuck. All doctors aren't fucking, okay, okay. Okay, this is, a, okay, somebody needs to hear this. So, I was doing the dishes yesterday, and somebody came to me, a woman came to me, 
And she goes, yes, but this doctor is renowned and he's known around the world and he's the best doctor ever. And I go, okay, so you could be doctor of the year. You could be saving people every fucking day. And then this doctor goes home, doesn't talk to any of his kids and shuts his wife out. Even though he saves millions of lives, he doesn't do what he's supposed to be doing to begin with, taking care of his family. Okay, so yet you could think these doctors are amazing, but I can tell you straight up that most of them aren't even doing their correct job. And they are putting their doctorate certificate over top of their life and saying the exact same thing. But I'm a great doctor. Why do I need to be around my family? Oh, my wife's bitching at me again because I took a double surgery this afternoon and I can't come home. Well, boo-hoo. Let me tell you. Like I said, they could save a million lives. If they're not doing the one job that they're supposed to be doing that they put on this earth like a kid or a family... It doesn't matter how good they are at being a doctor. They're fucked. Okay? So, like, try to think of that, you know, like, try to think of it that way, too. It's like people, you know, it doesn't matter what status they have. It doesn't matter what they do as a job. They can still be awful, disgusting, brutal people. So, that's another thing to consider is maybe you might want to consider changing doctors. You may want to reconsider the advice you've been given. You may want to seek some different counsel, okay? That's kind of what I'm seeing because it's definitely moving forward, okay? There's no doubt in my mind this child will be conceived. And I say child because it, Ace of Cups could be anything that you're giving yourself, okay? It could be a new car. I don't fucking know. But um, it's something that's birthed into this world and birthed from somebody who believes that they're never going to have their chance, that they're the ones doing everything wrong, but they're not. It's universal. The universe hasn't given you this gift yet. Okay. Because it hasn't been offered yet because you're not ready yet. Right. Get what I'm saying? Because like you, like, you know, some people get pregnant the first time they have sex. But those are also people that don't necessarily listen to their bodies. And maybe they're sleeping with somebody that they're not supposed to be sleeping with. Okay? And they create a little Satan baby. We don't know. We don't know. I watched this Instagram video. This mom asked her, I want to say six-year-old. She was probably like six or seven. She goes, she said, she said her name. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Raven, I think it was or something. And uh, she goes, do you remember when you were born, the first day, like of, of birth or anything? And she goes, no, but I do remember when the earth split and I came out of hell. A little girl said that. And her mom was like, she didn't put the camera on the little girl, she just held it on herself and she was like. Like it was jaw dropping, okay? It doesn't sound like she told her child to say that. Her It sounded like her child just kind of came way out of left field and said it. But you never know. You could conceive and your child could say that to you in seven to eight years from now. Hey, mom. I don't remember my day of birth, but I remember when you took me out from hell. Okay? Because a lot of people are not supposed to be conceived. A lot of souls are stolen. Okay? And they're, they're told that they're going to get taken care of. And they're told that these people are going to love them and appreciate them. And they don't. Right? Souls get stolen by liars. And then the liars don't do their jobs. So then that soul gets lost. Right? And, like, that's what I think dis, you know, dyslexia kind of stems from. Because a lot of people are telepathic. And then they get told something in 3D that's a lie but they can still hear the truth telepathically. So it throws them off because they hear one thing, but yet the person that's speaking to them is saying something totally different because most people lie and they don't tell you the truth, right? They, uh, they will just kind of fill your head with bullshit so you just walk away. And that's another thing, right? Like this, from the looks of it, project is going to be birthed. It's just 
the universe is like you're someone is just being too hard on themselves and thinking that they've done all the hard work already but hard work is something that never really stops the more work you do the more you get out of it right so somebody has to i think kind of get on to that um kind of get on to that phase where life does change and just because sometimes you may sit in limbo for a bit i think sometimes we sit in limbo to uh prepare ourselves for the next move ahead right and you can't be move 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 go 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 all the time you do have to rest and take a break and allow your life to catch up to you and then once it catches up to you you make your next move ahead and next move ahead and next move ahead right but you have to allow and align yourself to make moves so then you don't lose yourself moving forward so anyways, Sag, that was a pretty awesome reading. I'm not quite sure, like I said, what this birth is, but I do sense that it's something pretty kick-ass, you know, like something that you've been waiting for. And sometimes when we've been waiting for something for a really long time and we think that it's never going to arrive, suddenly when we've lost all hope, there's the doorbell ring, right? It's like, it's like not all is lost yet. It's just sometimes we have to change our perception on the way that it's happening. So then, you know, because not every result is the same. Like, what if all of a sudden you, you conceive and you're going to have triplets? And you're like, well, I'm glad that didn't happen last year when only one of us was working, right? Because the universe knows when to deliver things. And just because you might think you're ready... The sun comes out when it's ready. You can't force the sun. You can have your bathing suit on and you're ready to go down to the beach and that sun doesn't come out. You can't force something to happen. I think that's what the final message is, is that someone's just trying to force something to happen that happens naturally on a day-to-day -day basis. Never forced, right? Just because you want it really bad, that also never changes anything. So... Anyways, I hope this resonates and makes sense. This was a very nice reading, and I'm glad it came out today. Um, if you want a personal reading, you can always hook me up with you <laughs> through email, uh, WhitneyMoonshine at gmail.com. Um, if not, enjoy the channel. Thanks, you like, thanks huge uh, for liking the channel and subscribing and talking and commenting and doing all those wonderful things that people do. It's really nice. Um, Yeah, I guess thank you for everything. And yeah, I hope it makes sense. Sayonara, everybody.